so the other day we got asked this question, or rather someone brought this up and said, hey, I feel like if I'm a good enough musician, then people will automatically find my music and will be able to just take off from there. And that is not the case. Mm. So in this episode, that's what we're going to be talking about. The world of if you build it, they will come, right? The field of dreams analogy. Yeah. And that is just not the case. So stick around. We'll roll the intro and we'll jump right in. This podcast is for singers who have music in their soul and want to be in the spotlight. We are Invictivox Radio. Hello and welcome to another episode of Invictivox Radio where, as always, we are your hosts, Mike and Angie Lee. And like we talked about in the, you know, in the very beginning, um, this is something that gets brought up so much. Oh, so much. Especially if you're working with really good musicians. It's like, hey, I should be able to just put my really good music out there and have it work. Because I think I think the reason why people believe this is because and it's always the people who are really, really good. They're like have a con- like they've have an incredible amount of talent. They put a ton of time into their skill development. Their production is insane. Their project is awesome. And they get to this point where they're like, why isn't anybody listening to my music? And they compare themselves to other people in the market and other artists in their genre who are definitely not as good as them. Like, noticeably, not as good as them. They're, they're, the quality is just not there. And they go, why are these people having so much of a bigger following than me? And I kind of suck at that. Shouldn't my music, that's the should word, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should work. If I put my music out there and I'm the very, very best, and these people, y- if you're one of these artists, you know what we're talking about. You focus so much on being the best, which is fantastic, by the way, and making sure that your project is the best, that you think it should work. If I put it out there, it should rise to the top. If I build it, they should come. And it's really frustrating to be this type of artist and be in this position when you realize nobody is coming and nobody is going to listen to your music. And you've thrown this party and you've got like your 10 fans there that always show up to everything. And they've liked your new album and you just keep putting out really, really good music and really good projects, but nobody's listening. And then it's frustrating when you look over and you see, you know, kids who are putting stuff out who put almost no time into it and no development into it. And it's half the project of yours, but yet they have millions of people following them. It's weird. Right? It, it is weird. Shouldn't my music <laughs> just draw in this massive audience? And you... I get where you're coming from, by the way. Like, totally get it. Yeah. It's frustrating. It, <laughs> it is hard. Because I think while art is subjective, right? Y- there's, there is this objective point, though, between in quality. Oh, right? for sure. So if people are in similar genres, you can tell the quality of one versus the other mm-hmm. pretty easily. And I think, like you said, that that almost sets things up. Like, okay, I can see that from a, from a skill perspective, I am, or we are, right? Our band is better than this other band. So why do they have more followers, streams, whatever it may be? Well, and they're also like, our production is better, our music videos are better, like... Because you can, that's again, that's not subjective. You can see apples to apples, quality, right? Just quality for sure. And so, yeah, I think that 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 plays into it. The other thing is this this sense that, um, just that people will will find quality on their own, right? But again, this goes back to that conversation that we had, where it's like, right now on Spotify, sixty to eighty thousand songs a day. Okay, mm. that is an ocean of content and information and songs and everything else to get through. We call that a bloody ocean <laughs> in the biz because <laughs> <laughs> there are so many sharks in the same water. The water's just red. It's just inundated with so much that it's just a red ocean. But, but coming from that perspective, I mean, it doesn't matter how talented you are. Mm. If you're getting lost in a, in a sea, right? Like... It's it's not that you're talented, that you're not talented. Things just don't automatically rise to the top. Rise to the top. Um, and I know everybody's always talking about the algorithm and like, oh, you know, like I, there's so many nuances to it. But it just goes back to this thing that you're no one's just going to ha- 
like happenstance find you and this is with any brand in the world right because you got to think of your music and your art as a brand or a product and it doesn't matter what product it is if you don't get it out there and you don't push it and you don't promote it no one will ever see it no yeah i think that's funny because you bring up like if you think of any other product or service that people sell if you start to think of yourself as an entrepreneur which you should musicpreneur okay and you have to sell the brand of you and your project and your music it's really funny to consider that you think you could put it out there and that it would just people would just find it no business ever was successful by doing that it's like saying okay i'm gonna i'm gonna start making the best hamburger in the world and i want everybody to come and eat my hamburgers well what are you gonna do i'm just gonna set up this little shop on my street i'm just gonna start making hamburgers and it's like, well, is it a busy street? No, it's just next to my house. It's convenient. And I, it's just this little, this little like lemonade stand type thing. I'm going to, I'm going to start selling hamburgers. Well, how are you going to get people to your stand? Well, I, I, they're the best hamburgers in the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, but they're really, they really are the best. They're so good. They're so juicy. Everybody loves my hamburgers. And it's like, okay. Um, and then super disappointing after the first day that they sold one hamburger to their mom. Well, <laughs> even, you know? if, even if they sell a hamburger to somebody else, it's it's not like that person's going to go out and tell every single person that they know, like, hey, I had this hamburger and it's delicious. They might tell a couple people. But, yeah, the, the, the interesting thing is, is, like, that's not how McDonald's started. No. <laughs> if you think of it that way, it's like this massive chain – all over the world did not start by just being like, I'm just going to set up this shop and not tell anybody about how good my hamburgers are. Yeah. And, and so I'm just going to hope that people buy them and then I'm going to open up a franchise. Like, that's not how it works. And McDonald's hamburgers aren't great. <laughs> 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 Newsflash. <laughs> um, another story. But like, is it real meat? We but, don't know. But what it was is convenient. It was fast, right? And now there you have multiple options in that category, but at the time it was just really fast, really simple, and really consistent. Right? Good enough. But, but they but are they are amazing marketers. Right. And so that's where they could get you to eat a really mediocre burger over and over again because of their marketing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like for real. And kids wanting happy meals. Because there's a clown. But here's here's the thing, right? That the real magic happens when quality meets marketing. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So the good thing is for all you guys who are really skilled and are in this position where you're like, I'm better than everybody else. Why isn't everybody listening? Congratulations. To my stuff? Yay. C congratulations. You are set up for success, mm -hmm. but now you got to take that next step. Um, that's a lot better than being like, hey, I have a decent following, but my stuff sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, why doesn't anybody listen to my new songs? It's like, because you're not songwriting well. But, but those are the people where you're going to be limited in your ceiling as far as um, like how big you can get. I, yeah. I do think is limited by your, your skill. skill and ability. And your quality. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, now for, y for those of you guys who are in a better position where you know you're good, um, now it's time to actually put... <laughs> put your money where your mouth is take take <laughs> your belief in yourself and now start to really promote it start to push it um that's kind of tricky though that's i want to bring that up because everyone asks us that they're like well uh, we even i even have an artist right now who he's super pumped to finally launch his album that he's been working on forever and he's talking about going and getting like a small business loan and you know running ads and everything and i was like that's so cool like way to take a jump and risk and all this stuff his his music's really great um and i i was like so what are you gonna invest in your ads what kind of ads are you gonna buy he's like oh i don't know yet and i was like but you're gonna go get a small business loan before you know <laughs> and he was yeah, like yeah. yeah because i just want to have the money on hand and i'm thinking well you know you're gonna have to make payments on that bef like and you don't even have a plan and he's like, I kind of know, I kind of know what I want to do. And I'm like, okay, kind of know is not it. So what, what we want to do is make sure we actually have a strategy in place and that you have your finger on things that are actually effective right now. Um, something to be aware of with marketing and with ads is that the between the different platforms, things vary in expense. 
and it's constantly changing as far as who has the best attention and the cheapest attention. And so understanding that, but then also understanding which platforms play into the type of thing you're selling, right? Like if you're selling versus like selling music versus selling like a physical product to people like t-shirt lines and things like that. So there's a difference between what your product is that you're trying to sell and then which platforms are going to be best for that as far as getting it in front of the right audience. And then the third thing is what is going to be the most cost effective thing for you to do. And there are so many strategies out there that you could deploy. And so the bi- the biggest thing that we need to know is like what's going to be the best thing for you yeah, and for your music. Because <coughs> let's be real, like in the, in the instance of this student of mine, um, I don't know how much money he was approved to get for a small business loan. But he's young. He's in his early 20s. And by the way, I applaud this. I think it's incredible. But like even if you guys just got like a couple thousand dollars, y- you have to understand that doesn't go super far if you're not really strategic with it. And th- it's really sad if you dump a ton of money into an ad that doesn't work. And then you're still out money and you're not making <laughs> money on your music. <laughs> and you still have to pay back a small business loan. Like. So, so so now you're going like deep in the ads and i think that we need to talk i want people to understand though to start to think about strategy because like it's so much more than just buying ads ads don't all of a sudden equal money or followers right. you have to have a very good strategy behind that and that's not to say you shouldn't do it because that's absolutely where we push people especially if they're super qualified or not qualified refined and have the right skills and their everything's polished and their project is amazing and it's like really all that's missing is marketing then of course we're going to push you off the cliff to ads well but there's but there's also when i say put your money where your mouth is i don't just mean your money though right like mm-hmm. ads everybody always thinks that ads are the only way to go out and promote and that's actually not the case at all right you can do it through collaborations you can do it through um uh other influencers you can you can get on podcasts on blogs on a- any other media there's so many ways to go about this but that's th- more organic but yeah the th- but the thing is is you just what people need to understand is there's a point where you transition and when i mean people i mean artists artists <laughs> <laughs> all y'all uh, <laughs> where where you transition where it's not just about the music anymore okay mm-hmm. so i like to think of things in three phases there's the the art right the music part of things and I know y'all want to think that it's just about the music, but remember, it's not. Then there's the the where art meets business, okay? And this is thinking about your branding. Um, your again, we've talked about this before, but like your avatar, your color schemes, your um, it's just your website. Every everything that that is both a mixture of of business and being like creative with it. Then there's the pure business side of things where you're crunching numbers and there's there's an art to that, but it's different. It's not like music. It's it's now you're trying to figure out the best ways to promote. And like you said, like have a strategic plan with ads so that way you're not just flushing money down the toilet because you can do it super fast. Oh, ads are. Yeah, it's fast. Um, and so it's a black hole. Really what it what it comes down to is you got to think, OK, like I'm. I've put together my music. Do I have the section where art meets business, right? Is that all put together? And so in our world, we always talk about skills first, then project development. And so when you're in project development, you're you're getting ready to go out and market it. So there's a plan behind it. And you have to be strategic so that way you follow this order. Um yeah, it's not just throwing music. It's like throwing paint on a canvas. Some people can make money off that. Most people don't. And just expecting it to look amazing. Like, you want to have a plan for the canvas. You want to have a plan for the whole project. Um, because if you do, you understand exactly from the ground up who you're making music for, what you're, how you're going to promote it, where you're going to promote it, where you're going to promote it is a big thing. Yeah, right? it's huge. Um, what platforms you're going to be using, if you're going to tour or not, like how you're going to do all this. You can't even think or fathom of how you're going to do that if you don't think about it while you're creating your project. Because then it, you just create something and then have to figure out who to market it for at the end. That's not a great strategy. But if you understand who you're making music for the entire time, if you understand your who in depth, 
then marketing on the other side of that is a lot easier and figuring how to figuring out how to market it on the other side is a lot easier and uh, way more direct and and um, powerful and yeah. so and that's what you're talking about with yeah. this project development and uh, but and that's why really what we want to like if I could get something through somebody's head on this episode it's simply this people keep following the same steps and we brought that uh, this up in the last episode that people keep releasing music and releasing music because that's what they see everybody do um if you're releasing a single every eight weeks and expecting like it to just keep building it's not going to happen okay mm -mm. just by but just because you're releasing music doesn't mean anything's going to happen and that's where that's where i think the the biggest trap that people fall into is they see that and that's that's just the most common move out there, and it's, I always think of this. You're on a clock. The second you release your first song, you're, you're on a clock to quitting because most people don't have enough, I don't even know what you'd call it, like stick to it -ness? <laughs> <laughs> whatever you would call that, right? Like enough pain tolerance. <laughs> really, that's what it is. Risk aversion and pain tolerance. To be able to hang in there. <laughs> for a decade mm. i think if you can most people would make it if mm -hmm. you learn and progress and keep moving um l learning and progressing is th is the really the key to it but at this point just understand that simply releasing music over and over and over again no matter how good you are will not make it so you're found no, okay. it's just going to drive you into the dirt with frustration because you're going to keep seeing. And we know this because we're working with artists in this boat right now where they've been at this for a really long time and they are the best in the game. Like they're incredible, incredible, especially compared to a lot of newer artists coming out because they've been doing it for so long. And they're super frustrated and ready to give up, even though they're some of the best out there because they can't find the traction. And that's what you're talking about with, you know, what you're on a clock to, f to giving up the because you just get so beat down because you put so much great music out and you don't understand why no one's listening to it and that's probably one of the greatest frustrations of all independent artists right. um it's hard it's a hard hard game and so that's all we're saying is hey just start to understand it's not just about the music and let's start talking about strategies that you can deploy to actually get it out there some mindsets that you can think about with the way you develop your project to really um make it so it's promotable on the other side and and have way more power with your marketability and then start to talk about you know really being open to it's more than the music and and that's th that's where the power sits right the music's the foundation it's where everything needs to start mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we talked about it last time you're a music centric entertainer great so music is at the center so it has to be good if it's not good get better but once it is good, mm -hmm. don't just don't wait. Think that that's <laughs> going to be enough, right? Yeah. Now it's time to to take things to the next level to learn how to actually promote, market, and get yourself heard. You don't want to be the best artist that nobody knows. Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather be a mediocre an artist that everybody knows. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> right? Like it's crazy, but it does work that way, y'all. So let's get on that that board that ship. Let's, yeah. let's board the ship. <laughs> <laughs> and with with that, board the ship. <laughs> we'll just wrap this one up for today. So, Ange, yeah. hit them with the question of the day. So, where are you guys missing the ship? <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> or what are you currently doing to actually promote your music? Yeah. Right? And if the answer is nothing, Mm -hmm. take you need to take a Find hard a look boat. at that and go okay i need to board the ship <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's about promotion and if you don't even know where to start with that hit us up like there's so many things you could be doing but it, the, the thing that's the hardest about it i think it's so debilitating people get analysis paralysis is they don't even know which step to take and they want to take the right step yeah and so it's what's what's the right step next and it really comes down to where you're at right now and being very real with that so that we can get strategic but remember, we don't want to just be throwing paint in a canvas that we're not intentionally putting on there. We don't want to just be doing th lots of things and running in circles and doing a lot and being busy but not getting anywhere. We want to make sure you're in synchronicity on a path to an actual destination so that you're taking steps that actually are meaningful 
so that you don't burn out. Because that's the biggest thing. We just don't want you to burn out. Yeah. You're too good for that. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was great. That was great. That was a great that way to wrap fantastic. it up. That was fantastic. Okay, so. the shit. As always, <laughs> if you found this this episode helpful, if it's kind of brought some things to, to your mind, if you've had some ahas. <laughs> 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 I always think that's so funny with people. The, uh-huh. aha, the aha moment. I Light had an aha moment. Light bulb. Um, so, but if it did, if you did find it helpful, please rate and review. Let somebody know about mm. it. Um, hang a banner in your window. I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't do that. But, but just rate and review. That's really probably what helps. And us comment, the most. comment, comment. Let us know where you're you're getting hung up so yeah. that we can help you out. If you're on the YouTube, uh, answer the question of the day. We yeah. can go in there and respond to what you guys say. If you have any questions, if you have any thoughts. Anyways, we appreciate you for listening, and until next time, peace. Peace.